So welcome everybody. We are indeed the juniors. Uh, our goal was to do short-term Denke prediction based on temporal and spatial modeling. Next. So what are we going to present? First of all, the team. Wait a bit, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, define the problem we wanted to tackle, our solution, how we handle the solution, any future steps that we uh, see, and the potential impact of our solution in the future. Next. So uh, as you see here, this is a team. Uh, I'm not going to say too much about it, because I did already an introduction yesterday, just to know that we are all juniors. So please note this down, jury. <laughs> it's important. <laughs> and uh, we don't the rest, like we are. yes, indeed. The rest were still awesome. So uh, please, uh, next slide. So what, uh, what problem did we want to tackle? So dengue outbreaks, we want to know why are there, there, why, of, why there are dengue outbreaks. So what parameters have an influence on dengue outbreaks? Where are the dengue outbreaks? So can we pinpoint indeed the location where the dengue outbreaks uh, can happen? And also when? So we uh, focused on the short-term prediction to, uh, to, to give also time to, uh, to, to give time to uh, take some measurements, but also to have an accurate, accurate model. So we uh, created a prediction model. Our solution uh, is scalable, so it's easy to add extra data to improve the model uh, without a uh, lot of work. Also, it's transferable, so the, the model that we have, it's not uh, region-specific, so we can easily transfer the model to other regions uh, to do uh, the same prediction. Of course, currently, we base our prediction on uh, Malaysian data, so I think more or less it will only predict good for the same data that we use for Malaysia and also the same uh, uh, parameters uh, for Malaysia. We also want a reliable model, so that's why we do the short-term prediction and also informative. So we want to indeed uh, have an idea about uh, what is important uh, for, uh, for dengue uh, outbreak. Next, please. Okay. So now I'm going to give the word to my... Uh, Colleague and Colleague. friend. A friend. <laughs> <laughs> so, hi everyone. Um, so, how did we tackle the issue that we just presented? Uh, as Nico said, we used uh, data available on the Exavort. So, the, dat the data set we used is the, the dengue cases from Malaysia. Why we did we choose uh, this one? Because it's really accurate, the granulate is good, and we have weekly reports, so we can do weekly prediction. Um, initially, the idea was to use climate data as time series on a daily basis and to aggregate that on a weekly basis. Uh, that we did. The demographics we wanted to do, but we didn't get enough time to do that. And it's not mentioned there, but the idea, the initial idea was also to use vegetation data because there was the, the, the data of Vito, I think. And uh, yeah, as well, we couldn't do the demographics, so of course we couldn't do the Vito either. But still we got interesting, uh, interesting results. So what have we done? We have transfer five years of data for uh, the climate and the uh, dengue cases into um, time series. And we have applied two different models, the logistic regression and the random forest. So logistic regression because it's a robust algorithm and random forest because it can answer a kind of, it can give an importance to the features that we are going to use. So it can answer why, to a certain level of course, why the um, uh, what is the source and why the, the dengue cases a a appears actually. Um, next slide, please. So here is briefly some, some snapshot of a result we got. This is the importance features, uh, the importance of the features for the random forest. So something that I didn't say, we try to bring something innovative as well, but not focus only on the region we are studying, but also on the neighbors to see the influence if there is so a vector of propagation coming from the neighbors. And we see but there's kind of maybe a bit of bad magic behind that. But we see that the neighbors actually have a big impact. So the longer the bar, the more important it is, a bigger impact on the end results. And interestingly as well, we see that, uh, so something that I didn't say either, is that we try to do prediction four weeks in advance. So we did the model for four weeks in advance. And we see that temperature has an importance, the visibility has an importance, and as well the, the speeds, the, the, the wind speeds. So 
It might not be things like that, but we might think about visibility, for example, the pollution has an influence on the visibility, so the pollution might have an influence as well on the propagation of dengue cases. And this is just to show you the rock curve for um, the random foresting, the random forest results uh, and the accuracy of the data, and we have a decent accuracy of data. So next slide, we have also a small video that you can learn that we did, we, we did with Luciat. So just, uh, just wait a second, before thing, you, you will see two, two maps. The, the right hand map will be the real dengue uh, outbreak. So uh, a white zone is no outbreak and a red zone is an outbreak occurs. And on the other map, the left hand side map, is gonna be our predictive results. So it's not going to be a one or a zero, it's going to be a probability value. So the thing is that a red zone on the left hand side means a real, okay, means a real, um, Odd case, uh, or break things. So, please start. So, this is the probability figure that we got, and this is the real outbreak that you can see there. So, there is kind of, uh, uh, sorry, you have a kind of correlation, though it's not, well, it's, we can say, a bit far from perfect, but uh, we can see that there is the zones where it's red, there are kind of correlation over there. So, here we see the so probability coming. So we missed it, but okay. So, well. <laughs> so you can cut it if you want. Yeah. So you're gonna end up. Can you put the slides back? Yeah, in? but it's you finished. Okay, We're clumsy with the video. So. <laughs> okay, twenty seconds. Just to finish up, so uh, next, so in these next steps is to improve our data, just to add more, uh, to improve our model, add more data, other countries, vegetation, livestock, socioeconomical data, logistical data. <laughs> next slide. <laughs> <laughs> so what we do, I think we already have a good uh, model base where we indeed have some predictive features so we can predict why uh, dengue might uh, have an uh, outbreak happen. Where we, so we have a location where we indeed can pinpoint the location of dengue and also when. So we have indeed four weeks where we indeed can predict uh, the dengue outbreak. Thank you and thank you my team. It was awesome uh, these two days. Thank you very much. And, uh,